You are now listening to the Purple Fox Podcast. Hey, what's going on, Nuance Populi? This is your host, Kevin Cieze, reminding you real quick to like and subscribe. Before we get into it, you can find previous content on either Spotify or YouTube. All right, let's get to it. What's going on, everybody? This is your host, Kevin Cieze, coming at you once again with another Purple Fox update. Today, we're going to be talking about drones and criminal justice. So criminal justice reform is one of the most challenging issues the United States faces as a nation. But the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration has the ability to flip the script on our problem issue with five letters, BVLOS. A BVLOS stands for Beyond the Visual Line of Sight, and until recent 2019 actions taken by the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA for short, it was the main obstacle to police departments rolling out drone recon projects for greater public safety. Naturally, questions around privacy and transparency emerge around the usage of these devices without implementing proper policy to regulate it. But many see the possible boon drone technology can be if regulators and program operators don't breach public trust. The primary desire is to create greater safety, both for the public and police departments as a whole, using the BVLOS drone programs as first responder units and clearing 911 calls at a much faster rate than patrol officers ever could on their own. However, the biggest concern regarding privacy around BVLOS drone programs is the possibility of an uptick in crimes of poverty and the increased incarceration rate as a result of greater state of surveillance. Police departments utilizing these programs must make sure they are completely transparent with their community about the images they're capturing to and from response call events so that residents feel the BVLOS initiatives will do more good than harm. What I like most about the BVLOS capability is the possible hybrid job creation and the introduction of tech gig workers into the criminal justice space. That'd be an interesting combination once that gets rolled out. BVLOS drone programs are one in a series of emerging human innovations that could be either a disaster or a complete game changer for communities around the globe. Now, organizations such as the Association of Uncrewed Vehicle Systems International, or AUVSI, has uh, begun have begun a process of submitting requests for a comment on BVLOS programs to the Federal Aviation Administration. According to an AUVSI policy blog on the matter, uh, the request seeks a response from the FAA on elements of the BVLOS drone program, such as detect and avoid, technology that allows drones to avoid mid-air collision with other airborne entities, UTM, or Unmanned Air Traffic Management, that'll be a cool one once that uh, officially rolls out, and shielded operations, permitting drones to remain within 100 meters of a natural or man-made object like a tree or a building. Now, I'll be honest, the element of most concern is the shielded operations capability because there's so much they can abuse there. Um, But I can't deny that it would be highly useful in covert crime-solving scenarios and have possible free market consumer implications, which I'll go over later. AUVSI's goal is to request exemption responses on as many elements of the BVLOS drone program as possible before the FAA finalizes a rule on the topic, a ruling many familiar with the process are calling the Part 108 rule. The main holdup in the process is the FAA's mandatory obligation to consider the full range of safety and potential risk factors with each new exemption introduced into the rule. As I read the blog, I couldn't help remarking to myself that the the rules process is going to pale in comparison to the public scrutiny the BBLOS projects are going to face on the whole. However, the successful rollout of Rule 108 after the exemption process will depend on how transparent those who wish to take advantage of the new BVLOS capability are willing to be. That's gonna be key. I would personally lean closer to a maximalist stance on transparency, given how prone the larger public is to cite examples like Big Brother when it comes to expanded surveillance. It all depends on citizens seeing the greater benefit to the project rather than its possible pitfalls or loopholes. And there are plenty of loopholes. The issue community activists who disagree with the BVLOS program cite the most is the transparency around flyover footage to and from incident locations. 
in an MIT technology review article by Patrick Cezanne entitled, Welcome to Chula Vista, where police drones respond to 911 calls. Cezanne writes about the experiences Arturo Castañares, a publisher of La Prensa San Diego, had around the legalities and policy of the program. The article discusses how Castañares was denied access to some of the drone footage because all of it had the potential to be used in future investigations uh, and it would violate the privacy of citizens captured on tape if shared. The issue, this issue, of course, highlights how suspicious drone programs can seem, especially when local politicians don't specifically put policy in place to secure that transparency. The only way community, for communities to trust initiatives of this kind is for them to feel and see the decline in the crime rate within their neighborhoods without any governmental mishaps around handling the handling of such sensitive footage. If law enforcement is serious about rolling out FAA approved BVLOS programs, it'll be their responsibility as well as local government officials to reassure all stakeholders within the respective communities that they won't abuse this intel and power. When law enforcement secures the trust of the community and policymakers hold them accountable, eyebrows don't raise when new culture altering technology enters the scene. During the May 23rd City Council session, a local police captain within the city of Downey gave a presentation on the benefits of implementing a BVLOS drone program within the city. His main point around the presentation was the time and di distance differential these drone programs make possible, creating more time to process the situation at hand and allowing the necessary amount of distance for maximum safety. The heart of the presentation was to bring home the idea of avoiding the types of tragedies we see all too often on the news because an officer of the law made a costly split second decision. It was clear that increasing the time and distance factor for Downey law enforcement would alleviate a huge stressor within the profession. And anyone bearing witness to the, pre the police captain's presentation could see the possible benefit of a local drone program. The captain communicated how there is great interest in the program, but didn't exactly touch on the possible response of the wider community of Downey to increase surveillance. If Downey leadership can get the community's blessing to implement this program, then Downey PD can start using the BVLOS program to do some of the more interesting things conveyed within the presentation, like detailed crime scene investigation. As interesting as the prospect sounds, what would be even more interesting to me is if a private entity within the city of Downey were to move into the business of manufacturing drone technology, seeing as how it costs only about 500,000 on the high end to build a drone manufacturing facility. How amazing would it be to showcase not only a thriving city with a solid, transparent BVLOS drone program, but also boast of being one of the primary manufacturers and distributors of said tech instead of importing from China. The communities adopting these BVLOS programs want to see a greater commitment to departmental transparency before the programs kick into full gear. Many community activists cite how the FAA only concerns itself with the use of airspace, neglecting to secure privacy protection policies in some cases and leaving the issue as optional rather than mandatory. The biggest fear is that if the FAA approves items like shielded operations, the problematic um, feature I cited before, Police departments won't be upfront about what they're filming and for how long, possibly increasing the occurrence of incarceration for what activist David Moss of Electronic Frontier Foundations calls crimes of poverty. Residents and community members want law enforcement to keep them safe, but with all the turmoil and bad blood highlighted on mainstream media and the like, it's understandable that people are slow to trust new initiatives put forward by police departments. The communal seems to be greater intrusion on privacy for faster life-saving first responder calls. The best way for legislators and police departments intent on utilizing drones to secure that trust is to scrap the shielded operations portion from the Rule 108 process, reassuring property owners and residents. But there's no doubt that action would severely lessen the crime curbing application of the entire program. I mean, that's that's what they're advocating for it for. That's, that's the, the main feature that they want to use it for. It will be up to residents to determine what they feel is more important, less privacy or precision criminal investigation and police department safety. Once that decision is made, whatever it might be, 
the residents will also have to live with the consequences, knowing that this is one of those situations where the perfect solution just doesn't manifest. Now, one workforce development that may come about in the advent of the BVLOS drone initiative is the creation of all new forms of employment within police departments around the nation. Most criminal justice reform activists have been demanding more social service workers be introduced to police departments in order to respond to incidents that don't require a heavy hand. But it's not always easy to quickly determine when one of these workers should be deployed to a response call site. In an effort to avoid the tragic police shootings and other incidences we've become far too accustomed to, drone technology should be used to make data collection and recon much easier creating opportunities for departments to plan around effective community management and public safety strategies. The desire for public safety has to outweigh the fear of greater surveillance if this goal is to be realized. There's no doubt that a select component of most communities will always scream big brother at these types of initiatives, but one thing that becomes undeniable is hard data leaning towards the positives, and there are positives. If communities are, communities are clearly shown the data around the speed, and effectiveness these programs provide in response time and the benefit from deeper crime scene investigative detail, eyes will be opened and community leaders will be able to work with policymakers to find a near perfect balance with the drone programs. Employment might even open up a whole new tech capacity within police departments nationwide, adding space for a host of individuals who may have recently lost employment during the tech sector layoffs in recent months. The BVLOS programs may just completely reinvent our conception of policing in the United States. The most beneficial usage of the BVLOS drone programs would likely fall into the criminal justice category. But if communities accept a wider program implementation, the free market possibility comes into view. The Association for Uncrewed Vehicle Systems International, or AUVSI, as previously mentioned, has been advocating for free market delivery services like UPS, who wish to adopt a similar drone program for regular operations. I can already imagine how much traffic would be freed up by switching a portion of delivery options to aerial delivery, rather than the bulky vans that block vehicle lanes all too often. I know I've been stopped by multiple. Um, besides drone usage, besides drone usage for operations, the real desire is to create a burgeoning drone manufacturing market right here in the U.S. We know all too well the need for the U.S. to reassert itself as a model for production because the U.S. markets have relied too heavily on globalize, globalizing our supply chains and propping up free trade agreements. According to AUVSI, quote, BVLOS operations are an essential component of maximizing the value that the aviation industry generates as its economic impact expands beyond today's operations to more personalized transportation, delivery, and other services. The opportunity is massive investment towards workforce development and reviving the spirit of production here in the US. Drones and the possible BVLOS functionality seem like an exciting way to bring about that ethos. At the end of the day, all any of us want is to feel safe in the city or town we call home. The steady increase in criminal activity we've seen in recent days is more than a little alarming. But organizations like AUVSI have their work cut out for them in convincing large segments of the population that this level of surveillance is worthwhile. Drone tech isn't the only innovation that lawmakers have to create responsible and transparent policy around, but it's one of the few that will most directly impact communities once it fully rolls out. Leadership in cities like those within the Gateway have an opportunity to generate large community buy-in, creating jobs for possible drone manufacturing. What's important to remember is that no policy decision or rules surrounding BVLOS programs will be perfect in practice. What we can expect is that BVLOS programs, once implemented, will change our very way of life, from policing to commercial transportation. Not only will the U.S. open up new market lanes, but several new forms of employment will become possible. Much like many new innovations humanity brings to the table, there's always a rocky start. But I have a feeling this change may alter our world in the positive, more so than the negative. So, this has been another Purple Fox update, brought to you by Kevin C. Eze, your host of the Purple Fox podcast. Once again, 
Signing out.